Hey everyone, welcome back to part 7 of my Create Mod series. Now today we're going to go over all of the power sources inside of the Create Mod and then which one you should use for different types of machines or where you're at in your world and anything along those lines. If you enjoy this video, definitely go ahead and drop a like and feel free to subscribe. I upload a ton of Create Mod tutorials and actually on Monday I'll be dropping a video on how to design a working elevator which will kind of start the process into the more advanced machines. So if you're interested in that, definitely go ahead and check it out. Anyways, let's jump right into it. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about are these engineer's goggles. Now these are going to be super helpful for looking at the differences between all of these different machines. And they're pretty cheap to craft. It's just two pieces of glass, a piece of string, and a golden sheet. Now if you don't know how to make a golden sheet, you can check out episode one where I talk about a mechanical press. That should have popped, on the, uh, popped up on the screen right now. But anyways... To go ahead and make the engineer's goggles, it's just two pieces of glass, a golden sheet, and a piece of string, just like so. And then you just need to place them on your head, and at first you're not going to see a difference, but what's really awesome now is when you look at any type of machine that gives off power, it will tell you how many stress units it's outputting. Now this is going to be important as we get to the later machines, but for now we can kind of ignore that. So the first machine we're going to talk about is going to be this hand crank. Now the hand crank kind of speaks for itself. It's a user-based type of uh, outputting of power machine, uh, and it's very cheap. It's just a, a shaft, three planks, and an andesite alloy put in this formation. So the three planks, shaft, and andesite alloy, and it creates a hand crank. Now the hand crank is in a lot of other mods, but this one, if you place, for example, on a mechanical press, uh, it won't activate at first, you have to just hold down right click, it's going to use the machine, and then it's done. Now, something you might have noticed is as I'm holding this down, it's creating 256 stress units. Now, this is actually the exact same amount as a water wheel. So you're probably wondering why in my first episode did I have everyone build a water wheel when a hand crank would have done the job perfectly, especially for a mechanical press. Well, the difference is, is a water wheel is only a tiny bit more expensive, and this power source is continuous. There's no need for you to interact with anything. You can go ahead and move on to other machines. This will always keep your machines up and running. So think of this as more of like your power source for your house. This is going to power a majority of your machines. You don't have to worry about anything. And think of the hand crank for if you're going into a remote area or you're deciding to build a new base somewhere else and you just need a single machine up and running, you can create a hand crank. Or even the start of a building and you just need one machine to work. Think of that as the hand crank. That being said, if you're just starting out, I kind of recommend building the water wheel. You'll definitely get into the automation side. And same thing, check out episode one for that. So the next thing I want to show off, which I have showed off in a video where I talked about speed and stress, which is a very important thing that you will run into in the create mod. If, you, if you've run into it already and you're very confused, I have another video and I apologize that I keep recommended other videos, but I want to make sure that you guys are not lost during my discussions. But for this water wheel, there's a nice little gear trick. And if you place a large cog wheel, then a small one, then a large one, small one, and so on, you can see that you can drastically increase the speed from just a basic water wheel. And this works on any of the machines that I'm talking about today. So this is very helpful for like mixers and encased fans where speed completely depends on how much output you have. So an encased fan can shoot you farther or a mixer can turn faster based on your speed. Now this is very helpful when you use a speed controller because then you can place a speed controller and control the speed and everything and so on. Um, I'm sure many of you guys that have watched many of my videos, you already know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, speaking of encased fans, uh, you can use encased fans as actual power sources, which is pretty neat. Now, there's three different types. There is ones that have fire underneath, which I've just placed a piece of netherrack underneath. Um, I believe you can do this with a campfire as well. And then you have lava and you have the magma block. Now, I recommend using the magma block, which is what exactly what I've used in previous episodes, because this lava block and this fire will actually spread to wooden objects or flammable blocks inside of Minecraft. So if you build this inside of your wooden house, it will burn your house down. It might not spread right away, but in a couple minutes, it will spread. Speaking from experience, I recommend just sticking with a magma block, especially once you go to the nether, just pick them up. Uh, you'll only take damage if you walk on it, and you shouldn't be able to walk on it. And it will create the exact same amount of power as any of the other ones. So there is an advantage to using lava or fire. Now, you're probably looking at this and realizing it's only outputting 64 stress units. That's pretty bad. That's not a lot of stress at all compared to even the hand crank was 256. So you're probably wondering why in the world would you even use this? 
Now, think of this as more of like a generator in real life. This is something that you can build in just a couple blocks. It's going to have continuous output of power. It doesn't take a lot of work. So if you just need some simple machine up and running, but you don't want to have to use a hand crank all the time, this is a perfect example. Now, I've used these on our crushing wheels. Now that I'm starting to get more materials in my survival world, I can probably hook them up to a water wheel or even some of the later machines. But this is a great starting place for like a crushing wheel to just have a magma block, encased fan, and a vertical gearbox, and you're good to go and they're up and running. So this is something for more of the beginning and more of the remote areas where you need some power. So I've never talked about this machine on my channel, and that's because we haven't run into a case where we would need to use it. And it's very expensive because you'd need mechanical crafters up and running and everything along those lines. So this is the furnace engine with the flywheel. So let me show you on how this works. So essentially we have a blast furnace right here. You can use a regular furnace as well. And all you need to do is begin smelting something or cooking food or something. And then it will actually create some power. And you can see this is creating over 32,000 stress units. That is insane. That's a lot of power that it's being created. The only downside is once it stops smelting and we're running out of a fuel source, this will stop. So this is very expensive early on in the game because you're going to constantly need to smelt things, you're constantly need to cook things, and even though you're creating a ton of power, once this ends, it shuts off all your machines. So you're probably wondering, where does this even come in handy? Now, this is going to be great for machines in our future, and I can see this used in designs like a harvester for harvesting crops, and then we can craft them into some type of food, or we can use the power source of types of food and anything along those lines as a power source to power itself. Might sound a little confusing, so definitely just wait for those uh, later videos, but this will be helpful in our automation in the future, so just keep that in mind. So, real quick, I want to go over on how to craft this. So, it's very unique. If you don't care at all on how to craft this, I'll have the timestamps in the YouTube video. You can just skip over this. Um, I have this powered with a creative motor. I'm not going to go over what it is, but all it does is just give it an output source if you're in creative, but in survival, you can't obtain this. But the mechanical crafter... The way that you craft first the furnace engine is as simple as taking brass sheets, taking a brass ingot, taking a piston, and taking a brass casing, and they will go together and or turn into a furnace engine, just like we've used this before. The flywheel is brass ingots, just like so. This is a very unique one. And then the brass casing, like that. And then they will output into the furnace engine and the flywheel. Okay, now that we have the furnace engine and the flywheel, the first thing you're going to do is place your furnace or your blast furnace, and then you're going to shift right-click the furnace engine right on the side, so it kind of overlaps the furnace. The next step is you're going to go one, two blocks away and place your flywheel, and you'll see it'll connect the hose, and that's all you have to do to set this guy up. So simple with three different blocks, but it gets kind of expensive in order to create. I recommend not creating this unless you find some design that actually needs this, because you can use other power sources that are much cheaper. So I know that I have talked about windmills in literally the last episode that I uploaded, but I want to go over a little bit more about the energy side of these windmills. If you want to know on how to build a windmill, I'm not going to go through it too much in this, but they're very simple. I have a video in the description talking about literally block by block how to build a windmill, uh, especially your very first one. Now, a windmill you can see is spinning at the moment, and this is actually outputting 2,048 stress units, and this is only with a couple wool blocks. You could add more wool to this to increase the speed. Now, if you remember, the water wheel was only in the 200s of the amount of stress units. This is creating over 2,000. So this is enough stress units to power a majority of your machines that you have at least in the early game and even mid game. So this is something that you can build more towards not your very first energy machine, but maybe your second or third energy machine to power all your other machines that you've built, like mixers, mechanical presses, any type of belts or crushing wheels or anything. This would be a perfect power source. Also, if you make it look pretty, it's going to look really nice in your world, especially spinning. Doesn't cause much lag either. Now, I want to go over really quick, just briefly. This might sound stupid, but you want to make sure that when you're creating your windmills that you're actually doing all of the sides. Because you can see in how slow this is spinning. Yes, it's generating 512 stress units, but it's going so slow that a machine would not actually be able to really power much off of this. You'd be able to power a million mechanical presses, but this is not going fast enough. So just keep that in mind, make it look like an actual windmill, and it'll, it'll pay off. 
The last thing I want to go over with the windmills is you can actually use sails. Now, this is not the most prettiest version of it, but I wanted to go ahead and just show that sails can be placed on this. So let me go over on how to craft some sails. So this is going to make eight of them. You're, you're definitely going to need more, but I just want to show the basics of it. It's just eight sticks, one andesite alloy, and one piece of wool. And this can be any type of wool because you can change the color of the sails. So the way this works is you're first going to need to make eight sail frames, which is just sticks and an andesite alloy. And that makes eight of those. And then you just place these around in a circle, place the wool in the center, and then you get eight white sails. So let me fly up and show you. You can see that this is generating 1,024 stress units with just a couple sails. But this will allow you to get a little bit more creative because you can create certain designs and stuff like that because you can change the colors of these white sails. And also it kind of looks a little bit better. So I wanted to show a different option just in case you don't have a lot of wool. You can use this uh, with more wood and andesite as a kind of like an alternative. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I just have to say, I say it in like every video, that the support on this is amazing. I've never had this much support in my career of YouTube, and I, I just want to say thank you. All I ask is that if you really enjoy these videos, to drop a like on the video that you like, and uh, subscribe if you want to go ahead and check out more in the future. I also have a Discord server running, and right now there's a special rank you get if you join in uh, before I hit 1,000 subs, so definitely stop by, at least say hello. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys all in the next one.